the lesson I got in the last couple weeks, which I was in such a different space. If you remember, I had gone to that concert and I was buzzing off that. And then my reality changed very quickly that weekend. When I got the news, my sister passed, right? I'm smiling because that's what she would want me to do. I'm smiling because I hold her in my heart. I'm smiling because right now it's easier <laughs> to kind of, you know, hold things in with a smile. And it's a truthful smile. It's a real smile. I'm not just masking anything. It's really just gratitude. It's gratitude. Okay. So I was not going to go to India and I was convinced to go by my mother. My mother gave me permission to go to India. She said, you have to go. You'll never get this opportunity. You don't know if you're ever going to get this opportunity. Not never, never say never. You, you, you don't know if you're going to get this opportunity again. You have to go. And Rushi, our man director, was like, please come. I really want you there. Catherine was very instrumental. And I decided to go, right? But it was really challenging for me. It was very difficult. And I know you're gonna see videos of me smiling, laughing, dancing, celebrating, because I was celebrating the new couple who got married. I was celebrating my sister because she loved to travel. She'd been to like 60 countries. Like this woman went everywhere. And so hence why my mom was like, that's where she would want you to be. Like you could celebrate her in India. And so I went reluctantly with a lot of anxiety, but I decided to go, right? But I do want to um, touch on this lesson because I think it is one. Guess what? We're all going to go through this, right? At some point or another, not to be, you know, morbid, not to be a downer, not to be negative. On the contrary, I want you to see what the process has been for me. And not that I'm like poster child, but just so that when we have these losses that you and I can have something to draw from. So I just want you to have an example, whether it's the right example or not. I don't know. I don't have, you know, all the answers, nor will I ever say that I do, right? That is so not me. I am learning every day and I am growing every day. And that's the purpose of this channel. That's the purpose of, you know, these Fridays. That's the purpose. That's the purpose of you know the minute 22s that's the purpose of the fry fam so that we can learn and grow together so i am never going to attest to being the only way to do things right but this is the way i am going through this really big hurt so the lesson for me in the last couple of weeks was distraction is not healing being distracted doesn't mean you've healed and i'll share why so India for me was everything I shared. It was electric, it was so many things, so many things for me. However, India was a distraction, right? I was not in a place to be able to heal because I was distracted with all the festivities and all the celebrations that the wedding and the meet and greet so beautifully offered me. and. I had to put on a mask, right? So when you're home and you want to cry your eyes out and you want to, you know, call someone and be like, ah, or you want to, you know, just stay under the covers, you can. No one is watching. No one is looking. No one is judging. No one is, you know, sizing you up or calculating what you should and shouldn't be doing, right? You're behind closed doors and you're alone. I didn't have that opportunity, right? Because it happened so suddenly, my sister's passing. And then I left to India I think like a week later after I got back from being with my family and I didn't buy my return ticket from India until the day before I left that's how close I was to not going to India I say that because I knew that I would be there to celebrate not to mourn I would not have the opportunity to mourn and grieve the way that we all very well should during these very difficult times, right? And it was hard and it was exhausting. 
it was exhausting because not only are you jet lagged <laughs> but you're also like what the heck and your body's out of sync and now your heart is out of sync too right because it's like broken open and you're like right so it's very raw let me just say that we mourn and we grieve not just death or loss of a loved one right when i was in acting classes and i learned about emotions sadness which is you know what we feel when we're sad when we're grieving or mourning obviously can be any kind of loss so we have loss of a friendship, loss of a relationship, a boyfriend, girlfriend, right? Like we mourn these losses. That's why we cry. That's why we get emotional. That's why we don't want to see anybody. That's why we want to sleep and stay under the covers. We're mourning the loss of anything that is no longer with us. And I think there needs to be that period. And I think we're all entitled to that period, whatever stretch of time it is. No one can tell us you mourn for a day a week a month a year like everyone has a different process a different heart a different you know reality and none of us can attest to knowing what that legitimate time frame is right because my loss was my sister I'm just trying to bring it back because I want you to also get the lesson as to how you can apply it for yourself because oftentimes you know at our ages you know we we lose a friendship right and there's that process where we're like we miss what was that's what it is we miss what was we know or believe that we will never get that again right we mourn the loss of whatever that was for us in our hearts and that is a very difficult process and i don't think we give enough respect in that process i don't think we i'm gonna say the western civilization because that's all i know right i think the eastern part of the world does a lot better because they have different traditions and different understanding of life and death and they're just older civilizations right they're just so wise in my opinion the western culture that i know of I think we think that we need to just like rush through this process. I think we think that we're weak if we get sad or if we admit to feeling lost or confused or hurt or in pain, right? And that is so not right. It's so not right because we distract ourselves from feeling the pain, but distraction is not healing. We need to heal in order to process what has happened, whether it is loss of a loved one or loss of a friendship. And I say friendship because, you know, so many of us, you know, lose friends in our lifetime. I feel like I was triggered a lot. I feel like I had a lot of healing to do while I was in India and I wasn't in the best environment to do it. And I think that's why I've slept so much this week because it was exhausting. It was exhausting to not only wear this mask, but to not be able to show what I was feeling openly. And that the reasons, you know, people saw me crying because I did still cry. Don't think I didn't. I was crying tears of joy because we're celebrating this new couple right so I did shed the tears because you know me by now but not everyone knew why the tears were so quick to come out so a lot of Rushi's family was like she cries a lot <laughs> and it was so funny in a way because as actors we're really oftentimes not all I can't speak for everybody but as an actor myself I'm very in tune with my emotions I had to learn about them right and it's very easy for me to accept them but not everyone around the world has the understanding or the ability to be okay with seeing someone cry right what's the first thing we say to people oh don't cry I know you all don't say that in here because you know better <laughs> we can't tell someone not to cry we can tell them it's gonna be okay you could say it'll get better you know you need time but when the minute you say don't cry you are diminishing someone's process of healing so i did have a lot of people in india asking rushi 
our director, like, why is it that she cries so much? And he obviously knew my reality. I felt very supported by him. But as I was saying, I was triggered a lot. There was a lot of reason. I know that so many of us are going through this in some way, shape or form. And I wanted you to be present, to hear that it's okay to let people go. It's not easy by any stretch of the imagination, but it is a necessity, right? We have to let things unfold the way they, they are going to, so out of our control. And this is a reality that we're all going to feel and experience in some way, shape or form. And loss is loss. If you are grieving the loss of a friend, a boyfriend, a girlfriend, a loved one who's passed on, I want you to understand that you have to go through it to get to it and not to judge it and not to feel less than or feel weak because other people have a different interpretation or expectation as to how you should be undergoing this process. Your process is your own. And I think it's important that we value that and uphold that and support others through that and you know when i came back from india i took this week and i've been sleeping journaling meditating crying watching youtube videos on how to you know mourn and how to go through this um loss that I'm feeling. I've um, been on the phone talking to others, you know, people who love me and care for me. And those are things that we need to actively do until the pain diminishes. It's not gonna go away. I'm um, just literally, I think like one week and I expect it to become something bigger and better and grander and more beautiful as I have more acceptance around my family's reality. And even though I was afraid to come on here live, I still wanted to be with you because this is part of my healing process. And out of this, I'm hoping, wishing, wanting us to heal as a Fry fam because we all are going to go through this and um, it's inevitable. So we're here for each other and I feel the love and you can feel when someone cares about you and when someone wants the best for you. Like I said, I was triggered a lot in India. And what I also learned is that triggers are mirrors. When we get triggered, it is an opportunity to look at what triggered us, to look at what has affected us or impacted us or hurt us or opened up an old hurt that we thought was sealed up. And it was my opportunity to realize how many open wounds I have that I never sealed. And so I want us to take on this job, to go into those little parts of our heart, of our soul, of our past and realize where there are moments that we haven't yet looked at, processed, or healed, because we all have them. And that was evident to me on this trip. And that's why I was triggered. And that's why it would hurt me so much to this day when I heard things that I was like, I haven't heard that in a long time. And it still affected me. But I really want us to take on this job to look at these things and not get upset by them, but do it with intention and do it with the desire to understand a little bit more about yourself, about ourselves, and not just personally, but interrelationally. How can we look at things that have affected us in the past, give it some closure and learn from it so that when we are with other people who we love and love us or don't, how many people don't have our best interests in mind? We have to be prepared to understand how to process when someone is hurtful, because it's gonna happen. And those are the triggers I'm referring to. When someone says something hurtful to you, we need to understand how to allow that to roll off our back. I cannot sit and wallow about what was said to me that hurt me, that person may or may not know how much it hurt me. 
but I can focus on how not to permit what that person has said to hurt me. And that's a big job, y'all. I'm not saying this is gonna happen in you know the next three minutes. What I am saying is that we cannot be afraid to go into those places where hurt still exists and you're triggered by something. And you know what a trigger is when it, ah, uh, that like gut punch and you're like, uh, that hurt. That's a trigger. That's the only way I can describe a trigger right now, right? Let's do that for a person that we know we want to be and are going to be in this new year coming up, in this new year that is upon us, literally. This year has flown, and yet we could do a little bit more work because your future you will thank you. So that's what I wanna propose here today on this Friday. I know it's a little heavy. I know it's a little much. And I also know we can do it. I also know that we are capable of doing this. And me personally, I'd rather do it sooner rather than later. Because that was evident to me as well. Had I healed these hurts when I got bullied 20, 30, 40 years ago, I don't know how many years ago, if I had learned how to heal them then, then maybe they wouldn't be triggering me now. Do you see why I think this work is so important and why I am suggesting, if you so choose to do these things, for you to relinquish that hold now in the near future versus it coming back to haunt you in the future? Here I am going to do, ooh, I'm gonna do this. This is new, okay? Mind your ears. This is new, but this was my sister's. And I always loved these, that she had these. And these are now a gift from my sister. Her name is Jacqueline, the self-love diva. And so she used to use this when she meditated. This is in her loving memory. So mind your ears, I'm gonna do it over here because it is loud. But let's clear some of the air. Let's clear some of the heaviness that this topic can understandably invoke in us. And so, let me try this live. <laughs> Ooh, that was loud, huh? And that, I didn't even do it. So the further out you go, the louder it is. I'm not gonna do that to our ears today, but And so it's been amazing. So thank you truly from the bottom of my heart that you all are here shining your bright light onto me and my family. I love you all tremendously. You all are a bright shining light in my heart and I'm so grateful for that. So thank you for being incredible. Thank you for being here and thank you most of all for being you. In a world where we want to be told that we need to be somebody else, thank you for being you. Bye for now. Thank you. So if you liked this video, go check out the others. I got lots of videos on this channel, so keep watching.